All right, welcome to CodeLink version 2 online beta. All right, when you run the EXE program that you've downloaded from the website, you're going to be prompted with this login screen. The first thing you're going to see is network news. Basically, the network news is, is a, a latest update, so to speak, of changes that I've made to the server and to the game. All right, so the host name is the name of the CodeLink server that we're doing all the testing on. You will not need to change this at all at any time during the game. The agent name and password we don't have yet, so we're going to make a new account. The first thing we want to do is click the New button. This prompts us to a screen that explains kind of what the rules are, explains a little bit about creating multiple accounts and how to reset your own account. Updates and upgrades are also explained here. So go up to the username area and we're going to enter in new user. And for our password will be new password. Click the sign up button and you'll see creating account success. Once that happens, click abort or back and it'll dump you back onto the main login page where we'll enter new user new password. Obviously these can be whatever you want. Now we click the login button and it'll prompt us through the next login stage. Go ahead now and click the login button. You can see it takes us through a stage where it's connecting and loading the user files. Now we've been dumped onto a blank desktop and for effect I'm gonna go ahead into the options of the game and change some of the GUI options. Now before I do so, let me explain that everything you see on this screen can be moved. The disconnect button is the most important button in the game and it tells us what we're connected to. Currently, we're just connected to the root global game server. Over here we have our active trace. Our active trace will let us know when we are connected to a computer that is actively tracing us. If the trace makes it all the way back to you, you will get caught and forced to pay fines. Right here we have our CPU taskbar. It is showing that I'm running no programs, zero of the 75 available CPU I have. In the bottom right hand corner you'll see the memory bar. Currently it is empty. Each one of these modules has a small icon that allows you to click and drag them to wherever you like. I'm going to put them back for right now. Now I will go into the game options and change some of the interface. First I will change my desktop background. By selecting desktop image I can browse a local file on my computer or a file that's stored on the internet. Keep in mind however some files stored on the internet prevent hot linking therefore will not load. And there we go we have our background loaded. Now you can also go into the GUI options and change the way the memory and program bars are displayed. You can also change the size of these bars. But for purposes of this tutorial, I'm going to leave everything in its original state to make it easy for you to navigate. Here you have music options where you can turn on and off the music and change the volume. To load music into your CodeLink game, Download the music pack folder and change the location of the mp3s. Now I will exit the options and give you a demonstration of how the interface works. First we will explore the file module. Go to the lower left hand corner and click the file icon. The file management system is a simple module showing you what files you have located on your hard disks. Let's look at these boxes. The program memory overview is showing what memory we have installed, what memory is in use, and what memory is free. And the hard disk overview is showing the total files, the total disk size, what disk is used, and how much space is available. The hard disk directory is showing us what two files we currently have located on our hard disks. The thumbnail view shows large icons, where the detail view will show smaller yet more information about each file. We can see that these two files are executable, 
and they can be installed into our memory bar. The memory bar is located down here in the lower right hand corner of your desktop. To install these programs, you click the program while holding the mouse button dragging it into the memory bar. Once released in the memory bar, the memory installation will continue. After the installation is complete, the icon in the memory bar will show you that the program is now available to be used. Let's go ahead and install the file copy program as well. By clicking and dragging, releasing the program into the memory bar, the installation module will install the program. Now we have two programs installed into memory, and you can notice in our memory overview that the statistics have changed, showing that we've used 40% of the available memory in our system. Now with our two programs installed into memory, let's go ahead and manipulate the files on our hard drives. First, we will copy a file. You can have multiple copies of the same file on your hard drive, but keep in mind it is taking up unwanted space. To run a program, go down into the memory bar, click the program and drag it back onto a file located on your hard drive. You can see that the file copy program has targeted filecopy.exe and when you're ready to copy the file, press the copy button. It will take a few moments and this speed is determined by how big the file is and how fast your system is. You can now see that a third file has been created, the file copy file. Let's go ahead and copy it one more time. After the file is done copying, go ahead and close the file copy program. Keep in mind that our CPU readout is showing us the taskbar of programs that we currently have running. We only have an available 75 CPU, so although we can run instances of the same program, you will notice that if the CPU has a higher requirement than what is available for the program, we will get an error. The file copy program requires 50 CPU to run. The file delete program requires 25. You can see that we've used all of the available CPU to run the file copy and file killer program. Let's go ahead and close the file copy program. We now have an available 50 CPU, meaning we can run two more instances of the file killer program without causing an error. Go ahead and close two of the programs. Drag the file killer onto the file copy program located on the hard disk. Press the delete button and you can see that the file will be removed. Go ahead and remove the second copy. That way we are not taking up unwanted space. That concludes what the file management system has to offer. It is a simple module, but it is an important one.